so we all know what is you know bronchial asthma but just to revise it is a you know very common medical uh, condition seen both in adults pediatrics and all age groups and basically if you look at the pathology it is an inflammatory disease uh, of the air which is triggered by external stimulus uh, you know uh, there is a genetic predisposition which is being you know given in literature which leads to mucus secretion bronchoconstriction and airway narrowing so you know uh, say disease of airways and it is very very important to understand the underlying pathology which is inflammatory process it is an inflammatory disease and it is triggered as i said by external stimulus and not all people are you know genetically predisposed to this uh, you know responding badly to such stimulus and uh, there is a genetic background to it and the most common symptom we know is cough and cough of course is you know not only with the bronchial asthma it is the commonest presenting symptom so how do we know it is different uh, you know cough can be because of any you know seasonal viral respiratory illness it could be because of any kind of pneumonia even you know covid uh, has common symptom of dry coughing so you know uh, we have to know what exactly and from where this coughing comes in the background of asthma so uh, when we say that you know we want to learn management of asthma we have to learn the competencies you know we all have read the books the guidelines and you all are well versed with the literature but learning it you know doing it practically and uh, and in and, and including the current guidelines because as i said everybody has to do same standards of care it should not be different from you know different providers and it should be depending on the you know individual patients and in family medicine background we often talk about patient centered care so every patient depending on the age gender you know a personal history family history environmental history uh, dietary history all these things are peculiar uh, and unique to individuals and our management should be depending on the individuals not on the you know, provider side so for for point of point of view we should always uh, try to give evidence based we should be latest evidence based guidelines available in literature so uh, it is our responsibility to learn to diagnose and manage asthma it is i mean of course uh, there are various levels of severity we will be talking about it but uh, uh, you know largely 90% of the situations can be managed in community and uh, you know by primary care provider and why i'm talking so because india is a huge country and primarily i mean irrespective whether we have a referral system or not uh, most patients would like and actually they do visit their you know primary care doctors so you know their nearby doctors their neighborhood doctors their family doctors or any symptoms so they may not be doing it is asthma or copd or you know respiratory infection they would have you know sub you know generalized symptoms so patient when come to the family physician they will come as you know uh, uh, undifferentiated symptom of for example cough so uh, then when it is responsibility comes on the first contact physician the family physician family doctors to differentiate make the differential diagnosis and in majority of the you know incidences this morbidity can be managed by family physician in the community itself and uh, this can be done you know with competency and skills so uh, before we proceed forward and to understand the importance of the pathology that i talked about <coughs> so you can see inflammation means you know internal you know in general terms it is internal swelling of the cells and which leads to narrowing of the airway so if you look uh, the airway which is of this caliber you know it reduces in its uh, caliber and you can see the passage becomes very small narrowed 
and this is the reason of you know entrapment of air when we inhale and it is not appropriately exhaled out and uh, it leads to coughing and uh, many time the whistling sound or wheezing sign that we hear and see in asthma patients so this pathology is very very important from the management point of view also because the, the medicines that we choose the group of drugs that we you know use and the modality of intervention that we choose all depends on the this pathological understanding of uh, bronchial asthma so always keep this picture in your mind what actually happens inside the lungs the alveoli trachea and you can see uh, you know uh, this muscle mucus and the airway narrowing so this is this very very important and as i said this does not happen with external stimulus to all individuals and there are people who are normally allergic or genetically predisposed they are at the higher risk and additionally there are other environmental factors such as smoking air pollution uh, you know uh, artificial uh, stimulants such as paints pesticides sprays and there are a variety of things from which a person can be allergic or which can stimulate an attack or or an episode of you know airway narrowing and inflammation of the alveoli or the respiratory system and other risk factors of course you know uh, many of us might be knowing is uh, being overweight and then gastro esophageal reflux disease nasal blockages rhinorrhea allergic rhinitis uh, uh, so these are the you know common uh, risk factors that one should be aware about but it is predominantly you know uh, risk to allergens and then the other environmental factors which are important to keep in mind and diagnosis is mostly clinical i mean we do pulmonary function tests to confirm it and to assess the severity but both in mild uh, asthma mild symptoms as well as from you know this severe episode it is possible to diagnose it clinically and as we practice and we see our patients on a daily basis we know this cough is different from a routine a viral infection or you know a, a, a routine uh, other types of coughs and coughs uh, cough is a, you know one of the cardinal symptoms of respiratory system and it can originate from various etiologies and or it can have you know uh, can originate from various pathologies but from experience we know that this is the kind of coughing which is uh, you know coming from bronchial asthma so mostly it is uh, clinical diagnosis and uh, it is not high and it is very easy to diagnose from symptoms that you now we have to know as we discussed cough wheezing uh, chest tightness shortness of breath so these are the commonest symptoms cough with wheeze or whistling sound uh, patients complain of chest tightness and that patient will have shortness of breath so all come these you know, together and as we gain experience you know uh, this situation can happen in other clinical entities also you know elderly patients like you know left ventricle failure or other cardiac origin etiologies but mostly given the background of the patient from the history of the patients from the way patients describe or the relatives tell about the symptoms uh, its recurrence we can understand we can just that this is Uh, bronchial asthma and uh, what is the symptoms variables you know it is it has episodic symptoms occurs on and off with a trigger and subsides and patients may not have symptoms for a long period of time sometimes they may have recurrent symptoms you know one after another depending upon the stimulus and you know uh, uh, the inflammatory status underlying uh, uh, and sometimes you know this may uh, be related to some you know uh, uh, stimulus such as you know there is asthma 
situation which is exercise induced so patients will tell that you know they have these symptoms when they exercise or you know when the seasons change or when they inhale or they are exposed to certain environment and uh, there are other trigger factors you know which can aggravate the situation common cold and common cold is as we know is a self limiting condition in most of the patients but sometimes it is it may aggravate or it may may stimulate uh, asthmatic attack or asthmatic episode in the patients then uh, i've already talked about the allergens uh, seasonal variation whenever you know the temperature is low or uh, external environment is different from what the patients or people are used to inside their home and offices it may trigger again and uh, uh, you know haze uh, pollen pollution all these things can uh, be triggered and such patients many times will have history of you know other allergic tendency such as eczema allergic rhinitis so we have to take all this history and as i said majorly in most of the times it is possible to diagnose asthma on clinical basis based on the symptoms and history and the context uh, of the patients and their stories we can diagnose asthma and when you treat it when you give right treatment most patients will have dramatic relief from the symptoms which again you know uh, confirms your diagnosis and managing evaluating and and, and diagnosing patients clinically is uh, very very important in family practice setting because uh, you cannot always have uh, you know because you have to give patient relief immediately you know they come to you with some symptom and then you have to uh, prescribe medicines and give them uh, treatment which you know, relieves their symptoms immediately so you may confirm it with you know uh, other diagnostic tools later on or in due course of time uh, to assess uh, the severity and uh, other stages of us in family practice you have to manage most of the time clinically so be mindful of all these symptoms triggers symptoms variables uh, uh history uh, allergic tendency uh, family history is very very important because allergies run in family so uh, if one child has asthma or their parents have asthma it is likely the children may also have asthma uh so so family history of asthma allergic rhinitis eczema is uh, of course important and physical examination you have to be mindful of uh, eczema use of accessory muscles hyperinflation uh, audible wheeze as i said you know what we call whistling sound bronchi on expectation so you know, when you do a clinical evaluation so these are you know, the basic things that i can uh, say with uh, you know uh, conviction that you no know, most of these things can be done clinically and should be done clinically in day to day practice so uh, there are other you know investigation diagnostic tools spirometry is of course uh, uh, one of the you know, most important uh, initial uh, diagnostic uh, tool that we should use and we use but as i said majorly in family practice we depend on clinical presentation and uh, management so spirometry uh, spirometry force spirometry volume in one second you know and uh, the ratio should be you know uh, less than 70% of the positive test in obstructive airway disease and uh, it should be you know bronchodilator reversibility or if you you know pitch nebulized patient with or give bronco dilator then this tendency is reverse and this volume is uh, you know increases more than 200 ml is a positive bronco dilate uh, dilator is a reversibility test so uh, peak flow charting is uh, important and these are all uh, uh, academic or you know if you are doing full time uh asthma practice and we should ideally maintain all this you know 
uh, investigations in our practice but uh, at times we are you know casual in practice and patients also get relief but it is important and useful to have all these standards and facilities available in your practice in your clinic so a uh, week to monitoring over 2 to 3 weeks and you know, variations this all can uh, give you a good uh, idea of what exactly is the level of asthma severity of asthma uh, what intervention whether patient needs referral what level of uh, treatment is required for such patients this all can be determined from simple spirometry starting and one simple spirometry evaluation also